So I will argue with that. It does work and retrograde nailing is the way to go. So my goals for this talk are to convince the audience that there really is no argument here, help everyone understand what the literature really shows and make our surgeons comfortable and have that align with patient quality outcomes. So we're gonna go over kind of the who, what, when, where, why, and how of retrograde nailing. So who? The historical indications that you may all know <clears throat> are bilateral femur fractures, patients with an ipsilateral femur and tibia fracture, and we call this a floating knee, pregnancy, especially early trimester patients, or even women of childbearing age where you want to potentially limit the radiation to the pelvic region, and obesity, where the imaging may be more challenging, the positioning may be more challenging, or you may get a lot more radiation for trying to image, especially in that proximal area that Dr. Espernio spent so much time going over. You also may want to consider retrograde nailing and more distal fractures. So I would argue, again, those are the historical indications, but what do we know now? There are more modern indications. So we have all of the indications I already went over, but there are a lot of more recent papers that go over expanding those indications to almost include everybody. So that would include the proximal third fractures, which you can see here, this is a paper from 2017 where they showed how high you can go with these fractures. You can also do gunshot wounds. Many of us are seeing more and more of these and there was some concern historically about whether they could be nailed retrograde and that would increase infections in the knee and this paper from 2013 shows that that is not the case. You can also nail open fractures back to 2012. These were shown to be fine to nail retrograde and not have any increase in infections. So really all femur fractures practically can be nailed retrograde. So when and where are we going to decide to go retrograde? How about all the time? It's easier to position them supine. You have less advanced fluoroscopic imaging. Again, Dr. Esprinia went over some of this in his talk, but you never need an x-ray tech to be able to get this image again when you can just get this and have an easy lateral of the knee. We all know that there are not always x-ray techs that are capable of exactly doing what we want at all times of day. So we also don't need extra assistance for the retrograde nail. You might not have a lot of extra people to help pull and hold that leg in the right position. And there is a quicker OR time to get you in and out and the patient in and out of the OR. So why? Shorter operative time, we already talked about. You don't have hip pain that you might get when you do an anterograde nail. You don't have the problem of heterotopic ossification that we also see with anterograde nailing. And you don't have that Trendelenburg gait that patients get when you've reamed through and nailed through their abductors. So why not is really the question. So how can it be okay? Well, we've actually looked at this. Lots and lots of studies have directly compared retrograde and anagrade nails, and they have showed no difference in reduction or malunion, technical complications, transfusions, healing or infection after gunshot wounds, as I mentioned, non-union, malunion, or time to union in those proximal fractures, as well as overall union, knee function, or knee pain. So all of these studies show that retrograde is just as good as antegrade. You do have to be aware, just as you do with antegrade nailing, that the length and rotation of the, the leg are appropriate. When you're inserting the nail, there is a risk of some distraction at the fracture site, which again can happen with both antegrade and retrograde nailing. And you could potentially proximally propagate a neck fracture, but if you have a retrograde nail and you have a neck fracture that's intraoperative, it's much easier to fix that than it is to work around an antegrade nail. Finally, you do have to be aware of protrusion of the nail at the knee, which is usually not an issue with the antegrade nail, but you never know. So in summary, outcomes are really equivalent in all types of femur fractures for both antegrade and retrograde nailing. It's a shorter operative time for retrograde nailing. There's no hip pain, no heterotopic ossification, no abductor weakness. None of those things do you have to worry about with these patients. And it's easier on the patient and the surgeon. 
So again, why not? I hope my goals were achieved in convincing the audience that there really is no argument here, helping everyone understand what the literature actually shows and making surgeon comfort align with patient quality outcomes. Thank you.